someone reading an application will never look at an application and go, oh, look at all these job duties this person's had. We should invite them for an interview. Application Renovation Season 3. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am great. I'm excited to walk through your application and see where hopefully we can improve it so that we can get you in to medical school. Before we jump into that, though, talk to me about how this application cycle has gone for you. Um, it was all right. Um, or just the process of application. I applied pretty early. I think I sent my application in on the primaries on May 31st. So it's it's been a while. Um, yeah. And then, you know, kind of, um, scrambled with the secondaries cause I had a lot to write, um, and then got them in within like two, three weeks ish, um, of getting sent them. And then, um, yeah. And I didn't hear back from any place until, um, like December when I got my first interview invite. And then, you know, it's been, <laughs> then that was that. Yeah. Then I had my interview in January, yeah. So only one interview? Yeah. Okay. And how did the interview go? It was all right. I don't think I was entirely ready for it, uh, which was on me. I, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't entirely know what to expect. And a lot of people told me it would be a conversation. So I was like, you know what? I can, I can talk. Um, and so I feel like I could have done better into turning that interview into an acceptance. Um, and currently I'm waitlisted. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. Talk about that for a second, because the interview should be a conversation. And so where do you mm -hmm. think there was a disconnect? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think so. The format of the interview is pretty simple. It was the person just walked through my like activities on AMCAS and that was it. So it's like, oh, do you have any? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, this is really hard to, <laughs> um, you know, generate like a flow of conversation, yeah. but it was, it was all right. So it was, you know, okay, talk to me about your leadership experiences. And I feel like I could have, you know, made it a conversation, but a more pointed conversation where I was, you know, talking about my, maybe not telling my skills, but just showing my skills better. Um, what do you mean by that? Showing your skills better? Like, you know, having, cause also it had been a while since I submitted my primaries. Um, so, you know, just refreshing better and like having anecdotes ready for every single experience. Um, I, I don't know if that would have gone better. I, I try to incorporate those, but I think I could have had a more like, um, uh, a more curated flow of conversation. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And to me, that type of interview, one where the interviewer is just going down your application and going, okay, tell me about this activity. Tell me about this mm -hmm. activity. Tell me about this activity is an interviewer who is probably new and, and it isn't comfortable interviewing yet because that's not a good interview, uh, unfortunately. So that's just kind of luck of the, the draw there. Oh, well. Um, okay. From your application, you're an international student. Where do you think, besides being an international student, which kind of puts you at a disadvantage, is there anything else in your application that you think lacked? Yeah, I think so. Just A, in terms of the number of schools I could apply to. Um, so I think for those schools that I was kind of, you know, the only school that I could send my application. All of those schools were like very, you know, the top 30 ish. And for them, I think I needed something beyond. I think my application was like fairly well rounded. Like I researched, I had clinical experience, um, but something else to kind of, you know, have the ad comms associate my name with. Like, um, and I heard this from maybe like one. Ad, like admissions that gave me feedback was like 
okay, well, you know, some our candidates were well-rounded, but also like had some kind of really interesting thing with their background or experiences that stood out. And I think that's what I was missing. I just don't, yeah. When you say top 30, what do you mean by that? Kind of the top 30, 40 uh, med- U.S. medical schools. Where is that um, from? <laughs> I, that's, um, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, not I'm sorry, just like, it's I don't the, know, U.S. US news. news, right? U.S. News, yeah. that's right. So I did a podcast episode on this. I don't know if you've listened to it, but yeah. the U.S. News is not a ranking of medical schools. It's a popularity contest. It is a mm-hmm. horrible methodology on how they build their list, a list that's created to sell magazines. And students who use this list as this mecca of, ooh, top 30 or top 40 or top 20, it, it doesn't mean anything. There is no sure. reflection of that list into the education that you're going to get at that school. Absolutely. Period, end of yeah, yeah. So completely agree. I and I if I had an option to, and, and I just, yeah, I just yeah. want to continue to harp on that. I just did a, an episode on it on the pre-med years recently. It was like 435, 436, something like that. Um, so everyone should go listen to that. But anyway. Um, all right. So you think that it's, oh, I didn't have this one extra thing that didn't help me stand out. And, and I would say that that's almost never the case, right? That's almost never like, oh, you didn't go and end world hunger. Therefore, <laughs> you're not going to get into medical school. So let's go ahead and dive into your application. Take a look and see where we can potentially improve for the future. How's that sound? That sounds great. All right. So as we're looking here again, you did mention applying uh, right off the bat in uh, 531, which is great. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can see here, it was it was approved on 615, so very quick turnaround. Again, we had mm-hmm. mentioned you're an international student, so that's one of kind of the big things that stands out right away. Um, you have some good languages here that you speak. And both mom and dad are physicians. And I highlighted both of those because when a student has a parent or both parents as physicians, there's going to be a lot of extra scrutiny on your application to make sure, are you doing this because you want to do it? Or are you doing it because mommy and daddy are doctors? Yeah. So there's, there's always a big question there. So then we scroll down some more and nothing in the demographic area. You did not mark yourself as disadvantaged and we get straight into your grades and your grades are stellar. So great job. Oh, thank you. With your application. Um, your senior year, you only have three classes listed here. Is that just how many classes you need to graduate and you're done? No, it was because so I was you know, this is senior fall and you don't have your seniors. Like I wasn't enrolled in my senior spring classes. So they just didn't pop up on my transcript. Perfect. Um, All right. So there are more classes there. Um, And I just put a question mark. So three, nine, as of your junior year, all the credits that you have, 55 credits, three, nine science, three, eight, five, all other three, eight, eight total. So GPA is not an issue, right? You are a great student. MCAT score, you slacked a little bit, only a 520, not a 525, uh, but but great job. So, so stat-wise, right, again, this is how I look at stats. Are they good enough? Obviously, in your case, the answer is yes. They, they are plenty good enough. Your stats are not going to hold you back from any school, period, mm-hmm. okay? Even as an international student. And there's a big myth okay. out there that is it as an international yeah. student, you have to be a stellar student. I think that's a a myth. You have to be a good student, again, as an international student, good enough. And then there are all these other issues with finances and other things that come with being an international student. Um, so stat wise, great job. Excellent. So let's get into activities and get into essay. So right off the bat, we're hit here with a tutoring experience from January to May of 2020. And I wrote here basic, right? It's a basic Mm -hmm. job description 
of what tutors do. And this is very, very common when I see tutoring examples. And uh, in my new book, I'll, I'll give it a plug, uh, the, the Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Application Process. I actually have activity description examples and um, this, this is a fake book, by the way. This is my personal statement book. <laughs> I taped on a fake cover uh, onto it. Uh, I don't have the real book in my hands yet. Um, but I have a whole section on there in, uh, about activities and how to write activities appropriately. And one of the examples I give is tutoring because it's such a common example of a basic tutoring example, which is what you wrote of like, here's what I did, right? You wrote... I designed weekly review lectures and worksheets. Well, yeah, that's kind of what tutors and TAs and all of those people do. Uh, I struggle to connect with large groups of students. Yeah, again, and you're new at this. Sure, that's what everyone deals with. Um, and so you, you tried, it looks like, to incorporate potentially some of the things I talk about. At the very end, you were like, oh, mm -hmm. usually shy Eric or Mia thanked me. Right. It's like, oh, yeah, if I mention a name, therefore, it's a story. But it's still very basic description there. OK. OK. Um, conference attended. Nothing special to, to put there. Right. It's just something you did, which is great. Community service volunteer, this MCB peer advisor. It's basically the same thing that you did for your tutoring teaching role above this, this undergraduate tutor. It looks like it's basically the same thing. Right. Of like, oh, I helped students in this kind of journey, whether it's a journey through a specific class or a journey through a specific kind of period in their life. The description that you gave is still very basic. Right. Mm -hmm. I organized mm -hmm. and led student workshops and panel discussions, continue to act as a liaison between students and the department. Right? Very basic kind of job description things that doesn't help me understand who you are. And so when you get feedback that says, oh, like there are other students who just have something else in their application. Well, this could have been your something else if you helped the reader connect with it in a different way. And that's why mm -hmm. I, 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 I always shrug off that, that something else excuse of, well, they did this one leadership thing, or they created this one program, or they ended world hunger, or they cured cancer. And you don't have that, so we didn't want to invite you for an interview or accept you. And I just, I don't buy that because not everyone who gets accepted to medical school has the privilege and ability to go do those things. Right. And yet thousands of students are getting into medical school every year who lack those things, who are getting into the same schools that gave you that feedback that said that you just don't have that one thing. And I think mm -hmm. that's where Again, for, for anyone, I'm sorry, who watches a lot of these application renovation videos. I'm sorry you're stuck watching me for a long time. But I, I think that's where I harp on the story. Because if you can connect your story and and help the reader see what you did, see the impact that you had, then this MCB peer advisor could be that one thing that stood out and made the difference because they connected with it at a different level than just, oh, I organized and led student discussions and workshops and blah, 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 right? That's where I harp on story. Does that make sense? Yeah, so would you suggest kind of, I guess to make that connection, use like one example, like yes. how, um, yes. okay. Yes. Okay. One specific example. Give me one specific example interaction with someone that just left your heart aching or left your heart happy or whatever it is. And then as the reader, I can see your compassion. I can see your empathy. I can see your impact through that story. Okay. Right. Does the fact that you led student workshops and panel discussions, is that important? Absolutely not. That's just a part of your job. I don't care mm -hmm. about that. Right. If you work at a, at a grocery store, do you need to put that you stock the shelves? No. Right. That's not important. 
but so many students feel like they have to put every single nook and cranny job description, every job duty that they did in these descriptions. And I don't know why they, they seem to think that's the important part. It's not, it's not the important part. Okay. Yeah. All right. And we get down to club member for an extracurricular activity here. Uh, it would have been nice as the experience name, instead of just club member, put the club name in that experience mm -hmm. name as well. Um, you have this semester long research project with peers. You brainstormed how you could utilize bioprinting, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then the sales pitch, right? The strength of working in and learning from diverse inter uh, interdisciplinary team while being exposed to cutting edge research, right? Scientific field. So a little bit of a sales pitch of, ooh, look at me. I can work in a group and I work with a diverse set of people. You're basically hinting at like, as a doctor, I'm going to be ready because that's teamwork and working with diverse people. Okay, so sales pitch stuff. You have your research lab undergraduate researcher here. Um, again, sales pitch things. For mm -hmm. me, just like I don't need a list of every single job duty, I don't need a list of skills that you think are important that you learned. Again, from a reviewer, from an admissions committee standpoint, if every student tells me that they have learned how to run uh, assays and how the, to, to use scientific programming software, whatever, right? That stuff isn't important. Who are you? What is your impact on this world? What is your impact on this one little activity? That's the important thing. And so when you end here with, through extensive review of literature on metho methano genes, whatever, uh, however you say that, teaching myself how to perfect complex lab techniques, right? I perfected complex lab techniques, right? It's like, did you really perfect them? Or are you just getting better at them? Uh, and actively contributing to scientific discussions in the lab, I have matured from a curious scholar into a scientist. Okay, right? No, it's, it's not important. And so, there are other things to show impact through here. Um, all right, now we get to our first kind of medical clinical experience with this clinic volunteer. And it was over a prolonged period of time from 2019. You have it through May of 2021, which is good. Good amount of hours. You're an STI screener, um, which is great. The experience description. So this is a most meaningful one. And so again, you have 700 characters for the description, 1325 characters separately for the most meaningful description. In your experience description, you have here, just again, kind of basic job description of, of uh, who this community or what this community is, this BFC uh, clinic is, the one-on-one -on -one sessions, you provide education, awareness, and counseling. You worked with patients. You saw an opportunity to improve the training support uh, provided to the new screeners. You took on a leadership role in the training committee, right? So just some job duties, a little bit of a sales mm -hmm. pitch of like, ooh, look at me. I, I have this kind of initiative that I, I take things on and find issues. It's okay, but it's just at the end of the day, it's just a list of job duties for the next volunteer that comes in could say the exact same thing, right? It's nothing about you specifically in there. And then for the most meaningful, you say here, my experience at BFC strongly reinforced my desire to become a physician while I observed clinical setting before. This was my first foray into providing direct patient care. My interactions with patients at BFC have directly influenced the kind of physician I want to be, one that always puts patients first. There's nothing in there about this specific experience and why it was most meaningful meaningful to you, other than it was your first foray into providing direct patient care. Mm -hmm. And so it's just this weird kind of few sentences that don't really add anything. It's just like, right. hey, I just want to let you know this is my first time doing patient care. Patient care, yeah. Okay, so nothing really important there. Your next paragraph here, many of my patients carried with them shame from sexual encounters, fear from being uninsured, right? This is where, right, what you just asked, 
a specific encounter, if you told the story of one specific patient who still resonates, who you still think about, that would be yeah. much more powerful and more memorable for the reader than just kind of in general, here's everything that happens. Yeah, there's a little bit of overlap in my personal statement there. So I didn't, you know, I, was, I didn't want to keep using the same stories. Yeah. Um, so that's that's always a common fear. And the answer is use different stories, right? You didn't have only one patient at this mm -hmm. uh, at this free clinic, right? So you can tell different stories. You can talk about it from different angles. So I, I, it's always a fear. And, and students who use that as as kind of an excuse of like, well, I, I did poorly on the activities section. I, I didn't I didn't do my best job here because I, I put it in my personal statement. And so I'm gonna have to sit here in my activity section. I'm like, no, don't do that, right? Just just tell a different story, come at it from a different angle. So we have staff writer, again, a tiny little bit of a sales pitch here of I stepped out of my comfort zone to interview people, right? That's very kind of benign, innocuous statement and i read it as i'm going to show you like look at look at me i can get out of my comfort zone and so just something i wanted to call out there interesting yeah it was it's actually very interesting because i had stories in my first like draft of the activities section and my um pre-health advisor actually told me like don't do that yeah. which i thought was yeah and i had all these different things like on the internet that said tell stories and my advisor was like no stick to like a job description and in your most meaningful experiences, then you can go yeah. on. Yeah. And, and is, I, yeah. I a thousand percent disagree with that advice. And, and that's part of the kind of benefit of having, having multiple kind of opinions coming into play. But for you at the end of the day, if you're listening to your pre-health advisor who potentially knows you the best and who, who you trust, you go with that but then it potentially backfires. And and is your advisor wrong? No, that's just their opinion. I think yeah. that opinion is wrong. But there are, there are more than there there's more than one way to put together an application. The, the yeah. way that I talk about an application is through stories because that's how humans connect. I as as someone reading an application will never look at an application and go, oh, look at all these job duties this person's had. We should invite them for an interview. Mm -hmm. I will look at an application and go, wow, look at the, the impact that this person's had across this diverse set of experiences and the people that they are interacting with and the lives that they have changed. This person sounds really interesting. I want to invite them for an interview. It's, it's, it's the same thing in the business world. You can have two very different ways of interviewing people when you're hiring, right? Me as the CEO of two different companies, when I hire people, I can either hire people based on skill or I can hire people based on passion, knowing that I can teach the skills. Medical school will teach you everything you need to know about being a physician. Residency will teach you everything you need to know about being a physician, right? That's why we have a training path. Four years of medical school, three plus years of residency. That teaches you the knowledge and training to be a physician. And the advice out there from, from some people like your advisor is potentially focused on, hey, prove that you already have the skills necessary to be a physician. I'm just like, well, no, like me as the medical school, that's what I'm teaching you, right? I don't care that you think you have those skills. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you that, right? Maybe it's great that you've been a nurse or a PA and you do have some of those skills. Great. We'll build on those in medical school, but I, I don't need you to sell me those things. So it's, it's a different, it's just a different way to approach it. I happen to disagree with it. Are there some admissions committees out there that, or specific members of admissions committees out there who would rather see skills? Sure. That's just okay. a different way of looking at applications, whether it's for medical school or in a professional setting for jobs. I disagree with it. 
All right. So at the end of the day, <laughs> to kind of go back to that is it, it can be frustrating for you and for, for all pre-med students that Dr. Gray says this, my pre-health advisor says that, Student Doctor Network says this, Reddit says that, other advisor on the internet says this, other YouTube channel says that. At the end of the day, what you need to do is figure out how you are most comfortable putting yourself forward in an explanation. Yeah. That, that ultimately at the end of the day is what you need to do. And so is my advice right for everyone? No, because some people just aren't comfortable putting themselves forwards, it, it, put forward in stories like I recommend. Mm -hmm. And so they should focus on something else. Will they get into medical school? Sure, they could. Just because you don't follow my advice doesn't mean you can't get into medical school. So back to your application here. And we have more teaching tutoring and your third kind of basic job description for teaching tutoring. So at this point, I get it. I understand. You know what teaching tutoring is. You have your, your basic job description. And then you get to your physician shadowing and you have this wonderful story here. And I'm just like, oh. I know. I felt I was so bored of writing stuff. <laughs> I know. I know. It was, yeah. <laughs> what a time. This was my favorite kind of. I was like, I don't want to say I shadowed a doctor. I shadowed a doctor. And yeah, so I really enjoyed it. I was also told to cut down on this and don't do this. So it was, it was a whole discussion. <laughs> yeah. So in my mind, shadowing is, is super passive, not impactful. And do you need a story for shadowing? No, you definitely don't need a story for shadowing. But this is a nice little story here. And I connected with it. And it was good. And I like it. So the, the one potential red flag with the shadowing is it's only 30 hours. It's from mm -hmm. several years ago and it's out of the country. And so yeah. many medical schools may not like that. Okay. So you have shadowing. It's great. You don't have any recent shadowing. That's a potential red flag. All right. So you have clinical experience. You have a tiny bit of shadowing. You have lots of good extracurriculars. So from an from an activity standpoint, you have most of the puzzle pieces, the lack of connection to who you are, yeah. how you impacted these potentially hurt you. All right. Research you have here looks great. Just going through the, the research. Nothing, nothing terrible there. Um, club member here continuing on in your extracurricular. So you have club member. Again, it would be nice for a name of what club it was. But then you have here in your experience description as president. So experience name could be like president of. Club president. So you could you could have potentially um, connected with that better. And here you you say I led a 40 person team of people, which to me is great, right? Showing number or showing impact through numbers is perfect. Not every activity needs some big fancy story of interaction with patients or other people. You can show impact through numbers. And so lead, leading a 40 person team, that shows me a ton about you, right? It shows me leadership. It shows me organization. It shows me communication skills. It shows me a lot of things without you needing to sell those things, right? Mm -hmm. And so for the most meaningful, you could have continued some more numbers to show impact. Um, you did you did have here our membership tripled in the last, um, where'd it go? Uh, our membership tripled in less than a year. So that's good, right? But you could have potentially focused a little bit more on, on some other things. So what do you think is the balance? Because I, I know I used at some point some more numbers elsewhere. Um, so what do you think is a balance or a good balance between like numbers, impact versus telling stories? Because, you know, do you do you tell stories in every activity? You don't have to. No, that's what I just said. Right. Mm -hmm. Not every activity needs a story. It, I, I don't want you to force a story into a place that right. just doesn't fit. And so here, I don't think a story necessarily fits here just based on the activity itself and show mm -hmm. showing your impact in this activity through those numbers of, of how many people you led, how much money was raised, how much membership grew, how many, uh, how many 
people outside of the organization benefited from your organization, right? How many, how many uh, people got food or clothing or whatever else because of the donations that you accepted or raised, et cetera. And then we get to your personal statement. And here's where, again, like most of the application renovation videos, I think your personal statement is what hurt you the most. Okay. So we get to the first paragraph here in your personal statement. Your rapid, uh, your rapid HIV test came back positive, right? You steady your trembling fingers. So right off the bat, number one, I just personally don't recommend dialogue. And, and I think that's just, again, it's my own personal thing. And it, pro it stems, I think, because I didn't read a lot growing up. And so when I read dialogue, it slows me down a ton when I read. <laughs> Who's saying what? Who are they saying it to? I don't know what's going on. And so I have to slow down a ton. Okay. Um, and then you have, I steady my trembling fingers. I recommend wholeheartedly that all of your writing should be in past tense. Okay. And so you have present tense here. Um, all right. So two, two minor things just to stand out. Obviously, that's not the biggest issue here. It's okay. No, these these discussions are hot. <laughs> There's a lot of brainstorming. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What is my biggest issue with this whole first paragraph? What do you think it potentially is? And, and for someone um, watching this just on YouTube, she can't see my notes right now. <laughs> I would say it's maybe a little, I mean, it does take up a lot of space. Space isn't an issue. There's really no reflection, which isn't my biggest issue. Right. My, yeah. My biggest issue is that you, as someone unqualified, is giving test results to patients. Life-changing test results. That should not be happening. Period. End of story. And, Interesting. And, and maybe that's just my own training and my own bias, right? I was trained. Nobody should be calling and giving test results to patients or in person who doesn't have the knowledge and training and qualifications and credentials to then go, and here's what we're going to do, mm -hmm. right? So you as this kind of pre-med untrained person is like, hey, Sally, here's your test results, positive, sorry. We'll get somebody in to talk to you in a little bit, right? To me, that's just a huge yeah. flag and turns me off immediately. Interesting. Okay. And, okay. and is that your fault? No, that's, that's obviously the location's fault for putting you in that situation. Um, but it's very similar to kind of this big pushback that we're seeing from the AAMC and medical schools, rightfully so, of students going to third world countries and doing things mm. to patients that they wouldn't be allowed to do here. This, I think, is along those same lines. Even though you're not doing something to the patient, you are yeah. providing them with information that obviously changes their life forever. Yeah. And, and they can't talk to you about it other than hold your hand or hug you or whatever. Right. So that's just something that just really stands out to me. Let's move on. Second paragraph. This is a paragraph, not about you, but about your parents, right? This is a personal statement. And you talked about your parents this whole time. And outside of that, you didn't really tell me why it was important to you as to why it interested you in becoming a physician. You just said, right, through, through their eyes, I saw the reality of a physician's life. I witnessed both the pain and their sacrifices and the joy as the harbingers of hope for their patients. Okay, great. Does it mean you want to be a doctor? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think the whole point of that was to, and again, I could cut down on it more, but just to show that I knew what it meant, at least from afar, uh, to kind of become a doctor, but that wasn't enough. Um, and I say that later at some point that, I mean, that obviously wasn't enough. And I had my own set of experiences. Yeah. So in my mind, one sentence mentioning patients mm. or doctors 
gives me enough context to know everything that you said in a full paragraph. Right. Next paragraph, you leave the monarchy, head to the liberal Mecca of Berkeley, uh, which we were joking about before. You have this love of science kind of theme, this kind of cliche that takes up the first few sentences, right? Of like, and you literally spell out my love of science. I marveled at the complexity of, um, of life in methane springs at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, right? I like science. In the lab, I powered through several unsuccessful Gibson assemblies. I like science. Tweaking the procedure, I like science. <laughs> this allowed me to develop an analytical approach to problem solving. I like science and look at me, I have the skills necessary to be a doctor, um, right? And a perseverance, right? I have the skills necessary to get through medical school, I can persevere. So a lot of the just, I like science theme, I have the skills theme that just don't help me understand who you are. Uh, again, satisfied, uh, satisfied my intellectual curiosity. I like science. I'm smart. I like to ask questions. I felt compelled to find ways to make a more direct impact on society. Okay. So here's this potential switch from I like science to I want to be a doctor is probably in your mind what you're saying here. But having a more, more direct impact on society doesn't mean you should be a physician just means you want mm -hmm. to impact society. And the question is why? Why did you feel compelled to have a more direct impact on society? You don't really spell that out at all. You just say, I felt compelled to do this thing. Okay, so very common mistake that students make when writing these kind of big declarative statements, I felt compelled to do this, or I wanted to do that, is the why. Why? Yeah. Why? You talk about suitcase clinic, and you say here, I was confronted with healthcare disparities yet again. And I was confused by yet again. And I tried to go back through your essay to see where you mentioned healthcare disparities before. And I don't really know where that was. I don't know if that's what you were talking about with your parents. But to yeah. me, that wasn't healthcare disparities. That was bad laws around providing treatment around what you the kind of story that you were telling there. And so just kind of was confusing to me. And then you you have here my conversations with homeless single mothers, formerly incarcerated individuals. Right, this goes back to just an activity description. Doesn't really tell me anything about you. And your last statement reaffirmed my desire to serve these communities as a physician. Again, why? Why did it reaffirm your desire? Okay. So this is where I go back to tell me a specific story, a specific encounter that will help me understand a lot more than just in mm -hmm. general, here's everything that happened. Okay. Um, next paragraph, getting a little bit better, trying to focus in. Again, one story would have been better than one young patient, another young patient, right? You kind of you had a couple different stories there going on. Uh, be very careful with abbreviations. So you have through my experience at BFC, if I read your personal statement before I look at your activity descriptions, I don't know what BFC mm -hmm. means. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have it somewhere in the beginning, but yeah, in the beginning of, of my personal statement. Uh, oh yeah, you do that. Okay. You do, you do. I missed it. Um, the next part of it, I have come to realize that a physician must constantly integrate the science with the humanism of medicine. So these kind of very basic generic statements in my mind don't necessarily have a place in the personal statement because again, mm -hmm. they don't tell me who you are. They're just these statements mm -hmm. of like, Ooh, I understand. I know I've learned that. All right. If everyone, even if they don't want to be a physician, knows that, hey, a physician must constantly integrate the science with the humanism of medicine, right? I think a lot of people know that who don't want to be doctors. Is that an important thing to understand for you to want to be a doctor? No. Is it a statement that is being made to say, hey, like, I'm ready to be a doctor because I know this? I, I, don't, I don't know. So generic statements like this just don't necessarily add to anything. Your reflection here is probably the best so far. As a physician, I hope to be a scientist and an advocate striving for a balance in the care of the affliction and the afflicted. 
right? Nice, nice statement there. It's good. And then your conclusion uh, could be stronger in the direction of kind of hopes and aspirations. What do you hope to accomplish as a physician with this degree that we're going to give you, this piece of paper and all the training that we're mm -hmm. going to give you? How are you going to be a good advocate for our university to really be a good spokesperson for our university, right? An ambassador for our university. What do you hope to accomplish? Another question I like to ask students is, when you retire, what do you hope your patients say about you? All right, this is very big aspirational thinking in a conclusion that really helps me understand where you're going. And that's better than just kind of reiterating everything you already told me, right? This isn't an English 101 paper where you have to have an intro, your three supporting paragraphs and the conclusion that recaps everything, okay? Um, and then the, the one sentence I highlighted here, as my father says, a physician's life beget, uh, belongs to the community. So again, kind of bringing in what was said above, I just don't like bringing stuff back. And then this is your personal statement, right? Again, mm -hmm. you're, you already spent way too much time on your parents in that second paragraph. Don't spend any more time on them. This is your personal statement. So when I look at your personal statement, I finish reading your personal statement, I finish looking at your activity descriptions, I ask myself, who are you and why are you here? Why do you wanna be a doctor? And all I really know is that your parents are physicians and that obviously has impacted you in some way that you are now following this path. I don't really see a separation between your parents being a physician and you wanting to be a physician because you spent so much time Are you talking about that? being a physician. Yeah. Instead of, here is my path and here is my journey. And yes, they were physicians and I obviously was exposed to healthcare early on, but here's the first time where I thought, ooh, like I think I might want to be a doctor too. Yeah, that's kind of what I tried to get across, but failed to do so. Um, it was like, hey, this was, you know, the lifestyle I grew up with. Doesn't mean I wanted to do that. I just wanted to explore ex like opportunities. And I came here and had all my set of experiences. And I was like, hey, this is what I want to do. But I guess that distinction doesn't come across that clearly. And then just looking at your your school list, right? Long school list. Lots of public schools on there like Utah, Colorado, mm -hmm. Connecticut, Illinois, North Carolina, Virginia. Did you look into those schools and see if how international friendly they were? They're not very, but I mean, I thought it was just a numbers game <laughs> that if something takes international students worth like applying there, um, you know, regardless of if they take like three or four kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And it, if, if you did the math and, and did the research and they take international students. They do. Yeah. Good. Then that's, that's all I, I need you to do just to make an informed addition to the school list there. Um, questions. I understand completely about the personal statement. I was just also struggling on, I guess, what parts of my story or personality to highlight. Cause I also felt like yeah. so who me, I am didn't stop you right there. That is the worst question that you can ask, that any student can ask, right? You are not supposed to highlight different parts of what you think are important, okay? The personal statement alone is, why do you wanna be a doctor? Mm -hmm. you're, you're answering a specific question. You're not trying mm -hmm. to highlight different parts of who you are, okay? The experience mm -hmm. descriptions, you're not trying to highlight different parts of who you are. You're talking about a specific encounter that has been so memorable for you that you want to talk about it in the activity description. Mm -hmm. Where most students fail is trying to craft their application to highlight different parts of who they are. Students will take a list and go, okay, doctors, have to be service oriented. They have to be lifelong learners. They have to love science. They have to be compassionate and empathetic, and they have to be culturally aware. Uh, they have to do this. 
and, and students craft their application to all of those attributes they think are important. And what happens is the, the application just falls flat because mm. you trying to craft your application doesn't let you and your story come through. And so how, I mean, those factors without spelling them out, I mean, it definitely influences people to be a physician. So how does one, I guess, you know, talk about those, what do you, like, you know, you all of... What do, you, what do you mean factors that influence you to be a physician? Like, I mean, I do like science. And this is a horrible, you know, it's so, it's so one of those do, things that... So go do research, right? Go go create the next, the, the next mRNA vaccine for HIV that they're working on. Yeah, like, no, I like understand. Science is the bare basic, right? Bare foundation that you have to build upon to show mm -hmm. you want to be a physician. So what is, so like, I guess what, I don't know, how do you figure out your story eliminating all of those like, um, you know, bare bones factors from it? I think you have to do a lot of self-reflection and go, what experiences have I had in my life? And this is where I like talking about, right? Having clinical, having enough clinical experience to mm -hmm. say like interacting with Johnny, interacting with Sally, those, those patients just left such an impact on me that here's why I continue to drive myself to be a physician. Not okay. I like science, therefore I want to be a doctor. It's like, no, of course. Like, so, so focusing in on, and, and in my personal statement book, if you haven't read that, or my, my new application process book to start there is seed. What led you to want to be a doctor? That's completely missing from your story other than your parents are doctors. And watering events. What watered that seed? And you have bits and pieces of it. But if you focus in on one specific interaction at the free clinic or one specific interaction at the suitcase clinic or whatever it was called, right? One specific interaction that shows me the, the impact that that interaction had on you. And then you reflect on it, right? The reflection is such a key part and go, this is why this experience has continued to motivate me to be a doctor. Not. I like science. I'm a lifelong learner. Yeah. I'm passionate. I'm de determined. Therefore, I should be a doctor. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I also tried to, yeah, I did try to go for like the clinical experiences that did have an impact on me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that was also part of like the red flag. So maybe I could have chosen better ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think that STI clinic one would have been super impactful if the story was just tweaked a little bit and, and didn't expose kind of, Hey, look at me kind of going outside <laughs> the scope of what I'm able to do. No, thank you. That is very helpful. Stat wise, super stellar, obviously great job there. Activity wise, <laughs> you have all of the pieces to prove to yourself that this is what you want. Now you just need to reflect on them a little bit more and tell that story in a, in a much mm -hmm. better way moving forward. And then okay. when you are able to reflect on those, then in an interview, why do you want to be a doctor comes across much more clearly than, well, I like science and I'm motivated and I'm compassionate. And oh, by the way, my mommy and daddy are doctors. Therefore, here's why I want to be a doctor, right? That, that connection, it, it all carries through. All of the work that you put in at the beginning, doing all of this deep reflection and introspection and all this stuff will carry through in your essays, your activity mm -hmm. descriptions, your secondaries, and your interviews. Thank you. Good luck to you. I wish you nothing Thanks. but the best. Yeah, let's 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 hope a uh, second time's the charm. <laughs>